1966, Life magazine released an expose which was titled Genoveva, Nkrumah's Slender Mulatto Mistress. Cordy, I mean, you letting me know about his personal life and how much uh, he was connected to this woman called Genoveva Maria Absolutely. was interesting to me. Who is this woman you, you write so passionately about? <laughs> Who is Genoveva? Well, first and foremost, I'd like to say that women have always played an important role in our history and the development of this nation, which has for so long been undermined. Mm -hmm. uh, if you talk about Theodosia Oko, who came up with that tricolored flag and five-pointed star mm -hmm. that we call today the Ghana national flag. Mm -hmm. And so by looking into the role of women and by trying to understand Nkrumah from the perspective of a first view, a lot of Nkrumah's friends, um, the Kwesiyamas uh, and co, mm -hmm. write about his achievements, but it is only Genoveva Morer who writes about the personality of Kwame Nkrumah. So mm -hmm. for me, it was the most authentic account of him beyond mere propaganda and the kind of a, you know, the legacy that his confidants sought to build around the myth of his and that's, personality. That's interesting. Uh, Genoveva on your screens over there, you know, looks like a light-skinned woman uh, with some interesting hair and, and, and some, some, quite some European features too. She, mm. she was described as a mulatto. Now tell me how this woman, where's she from and how, how did she find her way to, to the Gold Coast? Well, Genoveva Estomare is South African. She okay. was born there and she schooled there. Okay. But she later on attended the Columbia University to you know, study for her master's. She had been a high school teacher before, so she was generally interested in education. Mm. Uh, she started to actually model. She was very, very good looking uh, a lady, very assertive, and she had a wide, uh, I'd say, um, variety of interests, including mm -hmm. piano, and, and she loved photography. And so, uh, right before independence, um, you know, the Gold Coast Service was recruiting people for its you know, public service positions uh, until they could contribute to you know, Ghana. At that point in time, it's important to know that Nkrumah was already leader of government business, mm -hmm. and it was almost certain that we're going to make a transition uh, as a independent republic, you know. And so, on the, on the 22nd of February, actually, in 1957, mm -hmm. uh, shortly before independence, Genoveva Mare arrived at the, on the Gold Coast. She arrived on the Gold Coast. Yes. I'm interested in her arriving on the Gold Coast to making it to the most powerful man in the land at the time. How did she come, uh, you know, become that close to Nkrumah? Well, the great Osajifu was at an independent state ball. Yeah. Uh, he was actually dancing with another lady, and he set his eyes on Genoveva Mare. Okay. And uh, she was seduced by his smile, oh. uh, but he had to master the courage to sort of call on her and to a close friend uh, walked, advanced towards the young, beautiful lady and said, uh, you know, it seems as though the leader, of the, the leader of Ghana would like to have a dance with you. And she graced him with that dance. And that was the beginning of perhaps such a profound relationship that would have a huge impact on Nkrumah as we knew him. And that's the book she actually authors, titled mm -hmm. Nkrumah As I Knew Him. Mm -hmm. She talks about his loneliness, mm -hmm. his visions, mm -hmm. uh, slightly described them as somebody who was uh, detached from the materialism mm -hmm. of, of that power came with, mm -hmm. and always set his eyes on that great challenge of African unity. So Genevieve Mare reviews bad tap conversations with Nkrumah. Mm -hmm. She reveals the, the beginning of the dialogues that started early in the morning, and, and that's the kind of... So, sounds very, it sounds very intimate for a woman who came to a Gold Coast for work and now in, a, in bed, for lack of a better expression, mm. with the first gentleman of the States, who is a married man, by the way. I'm not judging. It sounds very interesting to me. How close was Genoveva to Nkrumah? Deeply close. Nkrumah proposed to her, and she rejected it. This was actually... No, hold on. Hold on. Mm. Really? Yes. Nkrumah proposed to Genoveva. Before he got married. Oh, before he got married to Fatia. She, more or less, was his personal stylist. Mm -hmm. The green cravats and the white linen shirts and the iconic, uh, you know, counterculture dandy look that Nkrumah was known for mm -hmm. was largely influenced by Genoveva Mare. She was actually, at one point in time, 
the director of programs for the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation. Mm. You know, Nkrumah surrounded himself with very astute journalists, mm. people that understood the, the value of spin and PR. Mm. And so she was an integral part of that. The reason she rejected Nkrumah was that she didn't want to be reduced to the role of a conservative African woman. And she believed that if their relationship was um, regulated by law, it would affect the fabric of, of, of love and the bond that they shared. Mm. And so she was his muse. He desired her. Mm. But this is a gentleman that came to be known as the first prime minister or so in an independent sub-Saharan Africa mm. who had everything in the world. But Genoveva Maria wouldn't budge. And they kept that, a lifelong relationship. That excited him, I believe. Well, I think, I think with Nkrumah, after various assassination attempts on his life, mm. He had grown very paranoid. Mm -hmm. He was very careful of the people he had around him. Mm -hmm. And this was one person he could trust unconditionally. Mm -hmm. And having that sort of reputation and having the aura of a pan-African leader at the time, it wasn't the most prudent thing to display your weakness, mm -hmm. even in face of adversities. Mm -hmm. So I believe those pillow talks were very therapeutic, and he could get the most honest view from Genoveva Marais. I believe that's what sounds, the, the this, bond this was This all about. sounds very interesting. Tennis early in the morning, uh, you know, talks at dawn with uh, the first, you know, gentleman of the country. This is unprecedented access to someone who would have otherwise been a, a, a regular journalist. I mean, your, your research is, is, is very, very on point where you review that in the Life magazine, I believe it was on 16 March um, 1966. 66, yes. They released that, that very racial description of her as a slender mulatto mistress. That was actually an attempt to assassinate the character of the prime minister, um, of the mm -hmm. president, mm -hmm. apologies, of President mm -hmm. Nkrumah. Mm -hmm. and I think the big deal there is this is a lady, this is a lady who upon the overthrow of a sergeant for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah on the 24th of February, mm. 1966. That would make way for the Second Republic mm. led by Busia and Edward Okofuado eventually. Mm. It's important to mention that she journeyed to Guinea through Togo. But something very disgusting, happened. Dis distasteful now let's, happened. Now, let's, let's take you from that point where mm. Nkrumah is in Guinea in, in, in what year, 66 maybe, mm. and he was overthrown at the mm. point. Genevieve Maria was on her way to, according to your article I read, yeah. to, to meet her revolutionary lover, Absolutely. Which, which is a very interesting way to put it. Yeah. And, and, and she was stopped on her way. Yeah. Tell me about this, this, this moment where Genevieve was stopped. I, I think it's awful. The, the, the manner in which women have been treated, regardless of the roles they've played in society, mm. which is why I decided to outline the role of women in Ghanaian development from the Theodosia Alcos to the Hannah Kujos. Mm. Uh, upon that overthrow of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, Genevieve Maria wasn't just expelled from Ghana. She was continually raped Are you serious? by soldiers and then expelled. She went along with her manuscript, but she was stopped in Togo. She, she, was, she was consistently raped. By the military. By the military. And for what? I mean, I, I, I highly doubt we have that same caliber of soldiers today, but that should tell you the sort of people that brought an end to the First Republic mm. and paved the way for the Second Republic. Mm. It should tell you that the, 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 the manner in which they operated and how low their values were. Which brings me to, 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 to the magazine that came out. The magazine was, by Life magazine, w w was um, designed to discredit Nkrumah before the eyes of the people of Ghana that a married man had an extramarital affair. Yeah. But just to, just to go on, she was stopped in Togo, she was questioned, and that book she wrote, Nkrumah as I knew him, mm. was confiscated. I believe it was the most raw account of who Nkrumah was. Who the book was confiscated. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But with the help of uh, Mariam Makeba. Yeah. That's a, a huge lady. personality. Yeah. Exactly. And so it took her influence mm -hmm. to salvage the manuscript of a lady that had been tormented, put on the covers of Western magazine, disrespected, raped. You know, it took Mariam Makeba's... Um, 
influence to get her across the border to Nkrumah, who later on became co-president of Guinea. This is the savagery of the coup. You know, while many young people celebrated, women were being abused, people were being jailed, the president, uh, Sergio for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah's character, was being assassinated. And that part of Ghanaian history is lost, you know. People don't consider what made way for the new order of the Second Republic, which is associated today, current day, to a political tradition. And I believe that with the projection of people like Geneva Maria and the roles they played, we've come such a long way to having, you know, today, a phenomenal lady, an exceptional academic, who may have the opportunity to serve, probably, if the Ghanaian people decide to give her a nod as vice president. So we've come such a long way as a republic, and I'm glad to see that women are being treated much better, even though it's still a very you know, long, bumpy ride to ensure we have actual actionable equality that's just not on paper. That's, that's, that's incredible to, to hear this woman, Maya Makeba, on the screens, and also Genoveva, the two powerful women, women in their own rights, uh, two South Africans, one found her way over here, to be with uh, the first gentleman of this country. Who you say even rejected a proposal from Kwame Nkrumah? Who rejects Kwame Nkrumah's proposal, <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Who rejects Kwame Nkrumah's proposal, really? I mean, Nkrumah, as I knew him, mm. that, that you say is the most profound and detailed account of the man you've ever read. Yeah. Is that it? Absolutely. And her institutional memory of I guess uh, very confidential information pertaining to Ghana mm. and the Pan-African movement mm. was so crucial that I believe it actually affected her future marriage. She got hitched uh, to Victor Kanu, who was uh, a royal um, from Sierra Leone, if I'm correct. And uh, eventually he oh, that's was- a, a, That's a tall black man. And, and he was actually, a, you know, I believe, a high commissioner mm. to the United Kingdom. He was expelled as well. He was sacked solely because of his marriage to Geneva Marais. <laughs> Wait. He was sacked from his job as a diplomat. As a diplomat. Solely by his association to this lady, this mysterious lady that had an eye for, I guess, social progress and had a touch on some of the most sophisticated gentlemen of that era. So she got married after the whole Nkrumah saga. When was she released by, by the military? Well, it was, um, so that's in, uh, back to 66. She was released very shortly. She did make her way to Guinea. A lot of that uh, relationship then uh, isn't quite documented. As somebody who was manning uh, the administration of the GBC as far as programs is concerned, mm -hmm. I have every right to spin the opinion that Nkrumah's prominent voice from Conakry, uh, editorials that he, on the voice of revolution that he authored about, mm. when, when it comes to the structure of that, um, you know, media production, I wouldn't be surprised, mm. at least in my, my, my opinion as a, as a historian, mm. that she may have been involved in still maintaining that myth and that stature of Nkrumah until he died. You know, he was, as important to mention, co-president of Guinea too. Yeah. And when you consider the fact that he had been forging an alliance between African nations, another part that hasn't been explored in history is the fact that he was still legitimately president of this Ghana and Guinea alliance when you think about it that way. But that's, that's, a, that's a subject for another day. Mm.